Have you ever heard of Vaishan King Miller? Probably not. Well, maybe that's because you know him by his stage name, Silk the Shaka. Who would have thought, right? Well, today's hip hop musician of interest is Vaishan King Miller, aka Silk. Then, after the release of his first album, renamed Silk the Shaka. Born around the mid 70s, Silk the Shaka is best known as an American rapper and actor who hails from New Orleans, Louisiana. Known for his offbeat, double step rap style, according to Silk, I never rap offbeat. People just listening wrong. Selling over 10 million records solo, Vaishan was constantly surrounded by hip hop music. Both his older brothers, Percy Miller, aka Master P, and Corey Miller with the stage name C Murder, were mid 90s hip hop rap artists. To this mix, add Moby Dick, rapper and music producer, and also Vaishan's cousin, and you had a kid who had no choice but to be a hip hop artist. Vaishan did not let his brothers and cousin down. In the mid to late 90s, with the help of Master P and Priority Records, he embarked on his own journey in the hip hop world. Evidently, Silk Dashaka is not as popular as he once was, so the question is, what happened to the artist? Let's begin. Got a brother named P and a brother named T. You remember with him and y'all got to deal with me. I stay up on point. <laughs> I play drunk. I'm so hot, bro. I'm stop this shit. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Vaishan's rise to fame came when he signed to Master P's label, No Limit Records. Featured in Master P's The Ghetto's Trying to Kill Me and a few other hard tracks. This caused a huge buzz around his name and fans encouraged him to put out a solo record. Doors opened further for Silk Dashaka when No Limits cut a distribution deal with Priority Records. The result of all this good business culminated in Silk Dashaka's album, The Shaka. Apparently, the initial album cover for The Shaka was meant to shock the audience as it featured young Silk crawling out of a television set, a 9mm pistol in his right hand, and dressed in what looks like prison attire. Interestingly, in a 2015 interview with Vlad TV, Silk the Shaka talked about the streets and the death of his brother. He nostalgically recalls how the streets is where we made things happen. Because we were trying to get out of the streets, we didn't want to lose another brother. Silk had his own run-ins with the law in and out of juvie. He talked about his mindset and being ready to fight everybody at that age. Remembering that the founder of No Limit Records and most of the artists on his table were from the streets, the cover's inspiration had probably been the streets and its culture of gun violence. Let's also not forget about the epic long beef between New Orleans rivals Cash Money and No Limit Records which stemmed from the tension between Master P and Birdman. The album cover was eventually revised by covering the offending weapon with a parental advisory. With just his debut album, Young Silk had shown his ability to shock. The title of the album stuck and after being sued by the R&B group Silk for using their stage name, from then on, Silk incorporated the title The Shocker to his stage name and became Silk The Shocker. Commercially, The Shocker was a mild success. The 19-track album made it to the 49th spot on the Billboard 200 and made it to the 6th spot on the Billboard R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. Overall, the album sounds like a hard gangster rap album. Each track sounds like it was crafted for the streets and gives us insight into the life of Silk The Shocker or the people around him. This album is about 19 tracks in length and I have to say I must like about 80% to 90% of the album. Tracks to look out for include Gotham Fiending, Why My Homie, No Limit Party, The Shocker and I Represent. The follow-up album Charge to the Game was released in the late 90s. It debuted at number 3 on the US Billboard 200 and sold about 245,000 copies in its very first week. On it is the single It Ain't My Fault featuring Silk the Shaka's label mate, Mystical. It Ain't My Fault is considered one of Silk the Shaka's most successful singles. It sampled a jazz song of the same name, written by Smokey Johnson and Wardell Krasek. I know I said that wrong. 
Silk the Shocker's rendition of the song reached number 1 on the US Billboard Hot Rap Singles Chart and number 5 on the US Billboard Hot Rap Hip Hop Chart. The other single, Just Be Straight With Me, featuring vocals from Destiny's Child, only got as far as the 12th spot on the US Billboard Hot Rap Singles Chart. I wonder what Beyonce has to say about that. Probably nothing. She's rich. The relative success of Silk the Shocker's second album was followed by that of the third. Around 1999, the studio album Made Man was released. It featured Snoop Dogg, Maya, Jay-Z, amongst others. The 20-track album entered both the US Billboard 200 and the top R&B hip-hop albums chart at number 1. It reportedly sold about 240,000 copies in its first week, slightly less than Charge It To The Game had done. In the same year, Made Man was certified platinum by the RIAA. Two months before his 24th birthday, Silk the Shocker became one of the best-selling recording artists of the last century. Memorable singles from the album include It Ain't My Fault 2, and Somebody Like Me, my name on it. Now look, I like to live fast. I'm addicted to cash, the 45 on the day. Released on February 16, 1999. The single featured songwriter Maya. Although the single with Maya sold about 700,000 copies, it was considered moderately successful. The single was placed at number 43 on the US Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. Possibly because of the massive success of the first It Ain't My Fault in 1998, in 1999, Silk the Shocker released It Ain't My Fault 2 from Made Man, featuring the catchphrase, Did I Do That? Popularized by ABC slash CBS sitcom Family Matters comedic character Steve Urkel. Did I do that? The single immediately made its way to the top of the charts, proving that Silk the Shocker was still able to make an impact. As the new millennium approached, the videos to It Ain't My Fall 2 and Somebody Like Me played often on MTV and BET channels. They became some of the biggest hits of Silk the Shocker's career. Sadly, however, despite such achievements, Made Man, although a commercial success, is regarded as an artistic failure. The album failed to receive positive critical reviews. Both critics and fans pointed to the repetitive sound and usual No Limit Records lineup. Some artistic changes were greatly needed. Silk the Shaka obliged them and he turned to film. Though Silk the Shaka had been in the film industry since 1997, in 1999 he debuted as the lead in Hot Boys. From then on, he diversified his talent by alternating it between music and acting. Though Silk the Shaka had been in the film industry since 1997, between the years 1999 and 2000, Silk the Shaka worked in his fourth studio album. The result was the release of My World, My Way on February 27, 2001. It comprised 23 tracks and had features from Snoop Dogg, Trina, Goldie Lock, Mac, and other artists. On this album, the tracks that stood out are He Did That featuring Master P and Mac, That's Cool featuring Trina, Uh Huh featuring Slay Sean, and D Game. It took three years for the fourth to sell 700,000 copies. The album made its way to number 12 on the Billboard 200. The album managed to produce another relative chart success called Pop Locking featuring Snoop Dogg and Goldie Lock. Hey, do that damn thing. Me and my nephew, dog, housekeeper. The video to the popular He Did That was released on September 5, 2001. Interestingly, it features what looks like a mansion and luxurious cars parked or being driven around. Fittingly, Master P, symbolically the man who did that and made all the luxury possible, cameos in the video. Despite the display of expensive cars and near-naked women featured in He Did That, the album's singles were mostly unsuccessful. It was Silk the Shocker's turn to be shocked. As a result, around 2001 and 2004, he took an apparent leave of absence from the music scene. He came back around 2004 with his fifth studio album called Based on a True Story. It then became obvious that his silence had been a working holiday. Perhaps not surprising for someone who believes that, if you keep working you will eventually get your just due. This as it may be though, the resultant album was an abysmal failure and goes down as the lowest charting album of Silk the Shaka's career. In its first week, the album sold about 30,000 copies. By 2012, 8 years later, it had only sold about 325,000 copies, just slightly over what the second album had sold in one week. 
based on a true story, made it to number 88 on the Billboard 200. After the poor performance of his fifth studio album, Silk the Shaka took a leave of absence from the music scene for about a year. After that, Shaka returned again and was affiliated with the WWE, and not in the manner that you may think. In 2006, Silk the Shaka announced his return to music by featuring with a host of other artists on the World Wrestling Entertainment's WWE Reckless Intent album. On the album, Silk the Shaka performs the single I'm Coming that later became WWE SmackDown wrestler Montel Vantavis Porter's theme song. He also created another theme song for SmackDown's Orlando Jordan. After that, Silk the Shaka once again withdrew from the music scene, only to be heard from again about four years later. Around 2010, Silk the Shaka resurfaced with the release of his first mixtape, All I Do Is Win. It marked his return to hip-hop after quite some time away. In the apparent Keep It In The Family tradition of the Miller brothers, Silk the Shaka signed with his nephew, Romeo, who owned No Limit Forever Records. Although he had not been active on the music scene after 2010, it turns out Silk the Shaka was on a movie set. He co-starred in a 2011 horror film called Reservation. While on yet another one of his now customary four-year work holidays, Silk the Shaka announced via Twitter that he was working on his sixth studio album called Incredible. As expected, in 2014, Silk the Shaka returned to the music scene with the release of two singles from his album In Progress, Incredible. These were Don't Give Up, released around April 2014, and We Ain't Trippin', released around May. However, instead of now embarking on another four-year break, around 2015, Silk the Shaka unexpectedly announced on his YouTube channel the release of yet another single, Business, from his still-in-progress, incredible album. Another shocker, and further evidence of Silk the Shaka's hard work ethic followed. In the same year, he played leading roles in the films More Money, More Family, and Silk the Shaka's words, Hard Work Pays. His work ethic is quite commendable. From 2016 to 2017, Silk the Shaka was absent from the music scene. However, 2018 saw him release, not incredible as most expected, but rather it will all make sense later as his sixth studio album. Unfortunately, the album did not make it to any US Billboard charts. Maybe it will make sense why later. Given the performance of Silk the Shaka's last three albums, he has lately been more involved in film than music. 2019 saw him play Sean in I Got the Hookup 2. In 2020, Silk the Shocker starred in Angola 1, 2, and 3 as Stokely Carmichael. Now, hip hop is notorious for beef or conflict, real or imagined, between and among its artists. However, despite decades in the industry, being almost hip hop royalty and a product of the streets, Silk the Shocker appears to have made more friends in the industry than enemies. I wonder what Drake would think about this. No friends in the industry. So, while his elder brother C. Murder serves a life sentence for murder, Silk the Shaka operates in life by letting God handle things. He now seems to be against violence. However, he once said, killing each other, I can't judge nobody. He does not seem to have had any beef or conflict with either his brothers or labor mates over the years. Instead, from as early as 1997, Silk the Shaka was featured on quite a number of No Limit record albums. He has also featured and collaborated on several hip-hop albums. These include True to the Game, Mia X's Unladylike, and Mystical's Unpredictable. This is in spite of efforts by journalists to ignite beef between Silk the Shaka and Mystical. When reviewing the single It Ain't My Fault, most people thought Mystical outperformed Silk. Silk the Shaka's response was to work with Mystical again on It Ain't My Fault 2. In conclusion, Silk the Shocker is not only a gangster rap artist, actor and hip-hop artist, he is also a family man. He has three children, two sons and a daughter. He is married to the lovely Juju. Silk the Shocker is thankfully still in the game and contributes further to the growth of hip-hop and film. He is currently active on social media and can be found on Instagram using the handle at Silk the Shocker as well as on Twitter using the handle at Silk the Shocker. Around October of 2021, Silk the Shocker tweeted, Jacksonville and surrounding cities. It's going down October 8th, Vice Star Arena. 
me and No Limit soldiers will be in the building. Salute. Although there are no further tweets about the October 8th event, it appears Silk the Shocker and the No Limit Soldiers are on a reunion tour until November 2021. I wish them all the very best. Silk the Shocker gets about 250k monthly listeners on Spotify, and his most popular songs on the platform are How Ya Do That, It Ain't My Fault, I'm Coming, I'm a Soldier, and If I Don't Gotta. Working on that veto, man. Um told y'all stay tuned. Um, I had y'all, you know, this is gonna be a very personal project for me. I definitely wanna uh, include y'all in some of the stuff that we're gonna be doing. Um, some things people might not know, some things we, you know, share some stuff with y'all, get in the studio, get in the lab, um, all that type of stuff, man. Yo, your boy Shocker, man, just checking in for a quick second. Salute everybody that's doing y'all thing, man. Stay blessed. That's it for me, man, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Silk the Shocker in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests, be sure to let me know down below as well. Knew what happened to video dropping next week. Also add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace. Perfect.